When did you start coming home this late, Lucy? Damien's voice cut through the quiet of the living room. He was sitting on the edge of the armchair, hands clasped tightly, waiting. Lucy, still halfway through the door, blinked, caught off guard. Her fingers fumbled with her coat, and her face broke into a forced smile. Oh, Damien, work's just been so hectic, she said with a laugh that sounded hollow. You know how these big projects go. Deadlines everywhere. I barely get a moment to breathe. She tossed her purse onto the nearby table, brushing off his question with a wave as she walked into the room. Her coat slipped off her shoulders as she reached for the wine bottle on the counter. She poured herself a glass, a small sigh escaping her lips as she took a long sip. Damien's eyes followed her every movement. I thought I heard you say your project wrapped up last month, he said, keeping his tone even. Oh, that one did, she replied, her back turned to him. But you know how it is. They've given me even more responsibility now. Apparently, I'm the only one who can manage it. She laughed again, but the sound was thinner this time. Damien didn't laugh with her. He tilted his head, watching as she took another long sip of wine. Her shoulders were tense, and she was deliberately avoiding his gaze. I see, he murmured, eyes narrowing. You've been working a lot of late nights. Lucy shrugged, setting down her glass and finally turning to him. Well, someone has to pull the weight, she said, managing to sound almost playful. It's not exactly fun, but it's necessary. You understand, right? I guess I just didn't realize things had gotten so demanding, Damien said slowly, his tone almost probing. He leaned forward, his elbows on his knees. You've been gone a lot lately, Lucy. You missed dinner last Friday, then again on Tuesday. I hardly see you anymore. Her smile faltered slightly, and she picked up her glass again, swirling it in her hand. Come on, Damien. You know how my boss is. Always throwing last-minute tasks at me. She looked away, her fingers gripping the glass a bit too tightly. I thought you'd be proud of me, considering the promotion. Of course, I'm proud, he replied, his voice softening. It's just... He paused, choosing his words carefully. It's hard not to feel like I'm barely part of your life these days. Lucy's face softened slightly, and she sighed, reaching over to pat his shoulder. Oh, Damien. You're being dramatic, she said with a forced chuckle. I'm here now, aren't I? He felt his stomach twist. Yeah, you are. The silence stretched, the air thickening as they stared at each other. Damien wanted to believe her, to put his doubts to rest, but her words hung in the air, hollow and unconvincing. He looked at her, really looked at her, noticing the way her gaze drifted whenever he tried to meet her eyes, how she seemed almost eager to end the conversation. Is there something you want to tell me, Lucy? He asked finally, unable to keep the edge out of his voice. She blinked, caught off guard again, and her smile faded completely. What are you talking about? She replied, her voice sharper now. You're acting strange, Damien. He leaned back, folding his arms across his chest. I don't know. Maybe I'm just... noticing things I hadn't before. Like what? She snapped setting her glass down hard enough to make the wine ripple. Damien hesitated, but the words slipped out before he could stop himself. Like the way you keep your phone locked now. The text messages you don't want me to see. The fact that you seem to have more deadlines than you used to. His voice was calm, but he could feel the tension building beneath the surface. Lucy's eyes flashed, and her jaw tightened. Are you seriously accusing me of something? I can't believe this. She scoffed shaking her head. This is ridiculous, Damien. Is it? He asked quietly. Because I think there's a lot I don't know about what's going on with you these days. She crossed her arms, looking away. I don't have time for this, she muttered. You're acting paranoid. I'm just tired, Damien. Work is exhausting enough without coming home to accusations. He watched her, his mind whirling. Maybe I am paranoid, he said softly, though his heart hammered against his ribs but it doesn't change the fact that something feels off between us, Lucy. Look, maybe we both need a break, she replied briskly, already heading toward the hallway. I'm going to take a shower, and I suggest you get some sleep. You're overthinking things. She disappeared into the bathroom without another glance, leaving him sitting alone in the living room. As he listened to the sound of the shower running, Damien sank back into his chair, his fingers pressing into the armrests. He wanted to shake the feeling, the sickening twist of doubt that settled in his stomach. 
but the silence of the empty house only made it worse. Minutes passed, and the soft hum of the shower continued. Damien closed his eyes, his thoughts circling the same questions. His mind replayed the moments, the flickers of hesitation in her eyes, the way she'd pulled away from him over the last few months. Every small inconsistency, every vague excuse, clicked into place, forming a picture he didn't want to see. When Lucy emerged from the bathroom, her hair damp, she paused, glancing at him before heading toward their bedroom without a word. Good night, Lucy, he called after her, his voice barely above a whisper. She didn't respond. Damien stayed in the living room long after she had gone to bed, his gaze fixed on nothing in particular. The house felt colder, the walls closing in around him as he wrestled with his thoughts. He wanted to believe her, to push the suspicions out of his mind, but something in his gut wouldn't let him. As he finally headed toward the bedroom, he glanced down the hall where Lucy's phone lay charging on the counter. He paused, his eyes lingering on it, the screen blank and silent. The temptation gnawed at him, but he resisted, shaking his head. He didn't want to go down that path. Not yet. Slipping into bed beside her, he watched as she slept, her face serene and untouched by the worry that plagued him. Damien reached out, his hand hovering over her shoulder, then pulled back, clenching his fist. He didn't want to be the husband who doubted, who questioned every action, but he felt the weight of it pressing on him, dragging him deeper into suspicion. He lay awake for hours, staring up at the ceiling, the darkness around him growing heavier with each passing minute. And as he drifted into a restless sleep, a part of him already knew the calm before the storm was over and something was about to break. Next day, Damien sat beside Lucy on the couch, flipping through the channels, half listening to her talk about her exhausting day at work. He nodded along, though his mind drifted, the doubts creeping in once again. But he tried to push them aside, reaching for her hand, hoping to feel some kind of warmth, some sign that things were as they used to be. Then, a soft ding from her tablet interrupted them. A notification flashed across the screen, and before he could look away, he saw it, a message from someone named Ryan. Lucy's hand darted toward the tablet, her expression changing in a flash. But it was too late. Damien's eyes were locked on the message that had popped up, counting down the days till I can hold you again, my love. The words hammered in his mind, their meaning clear and inescapable. He blinked, feeling as though the room had shifted beneath him. Who's Ryan? Damien's voice was tight, almost choked. Lucy's face froze, her hand still hovering over the tablet. Ryan, she repeated, her tone a feeble attempt at confusion. Oh, he's just a colleague. We've been working together on that new project I told you about. Damien's eyes didn't leave her face. Is that how you talk to all your colleagues? Her lips parted, a flicker of panic flashing in her eyes before she quickly covered it with a laugh. Oh, come on, Damien. He's just friendly. That's all. She shrugged, picking up the tablet and locking it in her grip. Damien's stomach churned. He felt himself getting pulled down by the words he had read, the betrayal settling in his bones. Friendly? Counting down the days till I can hold you again sounds a little more than friendly, don't you think? Lucy shifted uncomfortably, crossing her arms as she leaned away from him. I can't believe you're jumping to conclusions over a message. Do you really think I'd? She stopped herself, catching her breath as she glanced away. Yes, Lucy. Right now, I think you would. He didn't raise his voice, but the intensity in his tone left no room for argument. Damien, please, you're overreacting. She forced a strained smile, trying to reach for his hand, but he pulled away, his gaze unyielding. Don't try to downplay this, he said, his voice thick. I want the truth. Right now. His fists clenched as he fought the rising anger in his chest. She looked away, her lips pressed tightly together. This is the fucking truth, she muttered. All right, I trust you this time. Only this time. He ran a hand through his hair, pacing the room. Next day evening, Damien held his phone in his hand, staring at the last text Lucy had sent. Home late again. Don't wait up. A bitter smile touched his lips. She'd used the same excuse countless times. But this time, he wasn't waiting up. He was planning. The private investigator had been worth every penny. In less than a week, Damien had everything he needed. Photos, 
text messages, timestamp locations. There were screenshots of Lucy's flirtatious texts with Ryan, photos of them together, and dates that lined up perfectly with the times she claimed to be working late. He saved everything, knowing he'd need undeniable proof to drive the point home. The thought of confronting her immediately had crossed his mind more than once, but he resisted the urge. No, he wanted her to see just how deeply she'd hurt him. He wanted her to feel the full weight of her choices. One evening, he picked up the phone, dialing her number. She answered on the second ring, sounding surprised. Hey, Damien, what's up? He could hear the faint sound of chatter in the background, likely another work dinner. Suppressing his anger, he forced a smile into his voice. Hey, babe, I was just thinking, you've been working so hard lately. Why don't you take a weekend off and go out with your friends? There was a slight pause. Really? I mean, that sounds great, but don't you have that big meeting next week? I thought we'd spend the weekend relaxing. Damien chuckled, trying to sound casual. Come on, you deserve a break. Besides, it'll give me time to catch up on some work here. She hesitated, then laughed, sounding pleased. All right, if you insist, maybe I'll go up to the cabin with a couple of friends. Just a quiet weekend. He kept his tone light, hiding the anger simmering beneath. Sounds perfect. Just let me know when you're leaving. After they hung up, Damien set down the phone, his mind racing. With Lucy's trip in place, he'd have all the time he needed to prepare. The next morning, Damien began his groundwork. He texted their closest friends and family, inviting them to a celebration for Lucy's promotion. He crafted the message carefully, hinting that it was a surprise for her. Let's keep it hush-hush, he wrote with a smile, knowing that Lucy would be completely unaware of the real reason behind the gathering. As he sent the invitations, Damien felt a strange calm settle over him. It was a sharp contrast to the storm that had raged inside him, since he'd discovered her betrayal. Now, he had a plan, a way to expose her lies, to show her exactly what she'd done to him. The days passed, and Damien continued his preparations in silence. Every evening, he'd sit with Lucy, acting as though nothing was wrong, while she offered her usual excuses and forced smiles. She seemed relaxed, even relieved, as though his invitation for her weekend away had put her at ease. He watched her closely, Observing every small detail he'd missed before, every moment she glanced at her phone with a faint smile. On the day of her departure, he helped her pack her things, holding back the bitterness as she hugged him goodbye. Thanks for this, Damien, she said a warm smile on her face. I really needed a break, he nodded, forcing himself to smile back. Have fun. You deserve it. She kissed him on the cheek and left, completely oblivious to the trap he was setting. As soon as she drove away, Damien got to work. He set up a projector in the living room, connecting it to his laptop. He went through every piece of evidence he had collected, texts, photos, location timestamps, organizing them into a slideshow that would leave no room for doubt. He paused, staring at a photo of Lucy and Ryan together. They were laughing, holding hands, and the betrayal hit him all over again. But instead of anger, he felt a grim determination. This was no longer about just the pain. It was about taking back control, about making sure she saw the consequences of her actions. When he was satisfied with the slideshow, he hung a banner in the middle of the room. Bold letters spelled out, Cheater's gonna cheat. He glanced around, checking the setup one last time. Everything was perfect. All that was left was for the guests to arrive. Hours later, the doorbell rang, and Damien opened it to welcome his first guests. His friend Tom stepped in, grinning. Can't believe Lucy's getting another promotion. You two must be thrilled. Damien forced a smile, nodding. Yeah, we wanted to make it special. As more friends and family arrived, they filled the living room, chatting excitedly. Damien moved through the crowd, greeting each person, feeling the tension build within him. He knew the moment was approaching, and he could hardly keep his expression steady. Lucy walked through the front door, exhausted but satisfied after her weekend with Ryan. She hadn't even had a chance to set her bag down when she noticed how dark the house was, an unusual stillness hanging in the air. Damien, she called out, flipping on the light switch. The sudden, booming chorus of voices made her jump. Surprise! Friends and family filled the room, smiling and clapping. Her initial shock quickly morphed into confusion, but she forced a laugh 
glancing around. That's when she saw Damien standing at the center of the crowd, a strange, unreadable expression on his face. But it wasn't his face that stopped her. It was the banner. Hung directly behind him, it read in bold letters, Cheater's Gonna Cheat. And just beneath it was a large, high-quality poster showing her and Ryan in an intimate embrace, the setting unmistakable. Her laughter died instantly, her face draining of color as her mind raced. What? Well, what is this, Damien? Her voice trembled, betraying her shock. Damien didn't smile, didn't flinch. Why don't you take a seat, Lucy? He said, his voice cold, steady. He gestured to a single chair he'd placed at the front of the room. Swallowing hard, Lucy slowly made her way to the chair, feeling every eye in the room watching her. As she sat, she noticed the slideshow projector Damien had set up, and she felt her stomach drop. The projector flickered to life, casting a bright light onto the screen. A hush fell over the room as the first image came into focus. It was her, sitting with Ryan in a small, dimly lit restaurant their hands clasped across the table. They were laughing, lost in their own world. A murmur spread through the room as people recognized her and began to whisper. She glanced at Damien, desperate to find some sign of mercy in his eyes, but his face was like stone. This is from two months ago. He began, looking at the photo with a cold detachment. The night you told me you were working late to meet a big deadline. The next slide clicked on a close-up of a text conversation. Her name. Her words, I can't wait to see you again. Damien will never know. The words glared back at her, and she felt herself shrink under the weight of everyone's eyes. Her mother gasped audibly, putting a hand to her mouth. Her father just looked away, his face ashen. Damien, please, Lucy whispered, her voice barely above a tremor. Let's talk about this in private. Oh, we'll talk, Damien replied, his tone icy but not before everyone here sees the truth. He turned back to the screen, clicking to the next slide. The image was unmistakable. She and Ryan were sitting on a couch, his arm around her shoulders, her head leaning against his chest. A friend of hers, Lisa, shifted uncomfortably beside the screen. Lucy, how, how could you? I didn't mean for it to happen this way, Lucy stammered, trying to steady herself. She looked at the people in the room, friends and family all staring at her with expressions of shock, disappointment, disgust. Damien clicked to another photo, this one unmistakable. She and Ryan, arm in arm, entering a hotel. The timestamp showed a date she'd told Damien she'd be away for work. More whispers filled the room, some guests looking down, others exchanging glances. Her closest friends looked at her in disbelief, one of them shaking her head. You told me you were working, Lucy. Every time I trusted you, you went to him, Damien said, his voice quiet but filled with a deep, simmering anger. Her heart hammered as she looked up at him. Damien, please. I, I made a mistake. We can fix this. He let out a bitter laugh. Fix this? Lucy, how do you fix months of lies? How do you fix sneaking around behind my back with him? Lucy reached out, her hand trembling. I was confused, okay? I didn't mean to hurt you. But you did, he replied, his gaze piercing. And everyone here deserves to know exactly how. The slideshow continued, revealing more text exchanges, photos from weekend meetups, even a candid shot of Lucy and Ryan kissing in the park. Each image seemed to twist the knife further, leaving no room for her to deny the truth. The shame was unbearable, the weight of it pressing down on her chest. She could feel the stares drilling into her from every corner of the room. She looked at her best friend, Jenny, who turned away, her face marked with disappointment. Desperate, Lucy turned back to Damien. On it with him. Right now. Just give me a chance to make it right. Please. Damien's expression softened for a brief moment, but then he shook his head. You don't get to make it right anymore, Lucy. You made your choices, and this, this is the result. The slideshow came to an end. The room was silent as Lucy dropped to her knees, her face streaked with tears. She clung to Damien's pant leg, her fingers trembling as she sobbed, her voice choked with desperation. Damien, please. I'm so sorry. I was foolish, reckless. It had meant nothing. None of it meant anything. 
Damien stepped back, shaking her off, his face cold and unforgiving. He looked down at her, his expression unyielding. Nothing, he asked, his voice barely containing his fury. Months of lies, sneaking around, all that time you spent with him, that was nothing. His words hung in the air, a heavy accusation. Lucy looked up at him, her face a picture of desperation. I made a terrible mistake, Damien. I, I didn't realize what I was risking until it was too late. Damien's eyes narrowed as he crossed his arms, the weight of his anger almost suffocating. And when exactly did you plan to tell me? He asked, his tone icy. Or were you planning to keep this secret forever? She stammered, looking around helplessly as if searching for an answer that could change the situation. But there was none. In that moment, she felt the weight of her actions pressing down on her. Her mind raced. Every word she wanted to say falling flat under the cold, merciless glare of the truth. Across the room, Ryan was attempting to inch his way towards the door, his eyes fixed on the ground as if willing himself to disappear. Damien's gaze snapped to him, stopping him in his tracks. Ryan, he called out, his voice firm and unyielding. Leaving so soon? You were such a big part of this. It's only fair you stick around. Ryan froze, turning slowly to face Damien, his face flushed with embarrassment. Look, man, I, I don't know what you want me to say. Damien let out a bitter laugh, his voice thick with contempt. Say something? You've been saying plenty, haven't you? Ryan shifted uncomfortably, glancing around at the crowd of friends and family who were now watching the confrontation unfold. He looked at Lucy, pleading silently for some kind of help, but she only hung her head, too ashamed to meet his eyes. Finally, Ryan cleared his throat, his voice low and nervous. I, I didn't mean for it to go this far. Damien's laughter grew colder, each word dripping with anger. You didn't mean for it to go this far? You were sleeping with my wife. Don't act like this was an accident. Ryan's face turned an even deeper shade of red, and he cast a desperate look at Lucy. I'm sorry, all right? I don't know what else to say. Lucy turned back to Damien, her voice raw with emotion. Damien, I'll do anything. Please, just give me one more chance. Damien's gaze softened for a brief moment, but then he shook his head, a look of finality in his eyes. One more chance? Lucy, I gave you years. I trusted you with everything I had. She clutched at her heart, as though feeling the weight of his words physically. I'll end it with him. I'll do whatever you want. Just please don't throw away everything we've built. Throw away? Damien's voice rose, his words cutting through her pleas like a knife. Lucy, you threw this away the moment you chose him over us. He held up the divorce papers, the stark white pages a brutal reminder of the finality of her actions. Sign these, he said, his voice low and steady. Because this is the only mercy I have left for you. Her eyes widened, her breath catching in her throat as she stared at the papers in his hand. Damien, no, please. Don't do this. He took a step closer, looking her squarely in the eye. Do you have any idea what it felt like to sit here, night after night, wondering why you were always working late. His voice cracked slightly, betraying the pain beneath his anger. Do you have any idea what it feels like to look at someone you love and realize they've been lying to you? Lucy reached out, her hand shaking as she tried to touch his arm. Damien, I know I hurt you. I know I was selfish and stupid, but I love you. I swear, I love you. He pulled his arm back, refusing her touch. No, Lucy. Love isn't what you did. Love doesn't destroy trust and break hearts just to satisfy some fleeting fantasy. Ryan, sensing that things were spiraling out of control, attempted to slip out again, inching towards the door. Damien turned, fixing him with a steely gaze. Go ahead, Ryan. Leave. But don't think for a second that you're off the hook, Damien warned, his tone dripping with contempt. I'll be speaking with your boss soon. Let's see if he has the same understanding attitude when he finds out what you've been doing on company time. Ryan's face went pale, his confidence completely shattered. He muttered something under his breath, looking at Lucy one last time before hurrying out the door, his footsteps echoing in the silence that followed. The crowd remained, watching the scene unfold with a mixture of sympathy and unease. 
Damien turned back to Lucy, his face resolute. Sign the papers, Lucy, he said again, his voice barely more than a whisper. She held his gaze for a moment, her expression crumbling as she realized the weight of his words. I, I can't believe it's come to this. Damien shook his head, his voice softer now, though no less firm. Believe it. This is what you chose, Lucy. You chose him. Over us. With trembling hands, Lucy reached for the pen Damien held out to her. She hesitated, glancing up at him, hoping for some sign that he'd soften, that he'd change his mind. But his eyes remained cold, distant. Slowly, she pressed the pen to the paper, her signature forming on the line. As she finished, a single tear slipped down her cheek, the realization sinking in that this was the end. Everything they'd built together, every shared moment, every memory, it was all slipping away. When she handed the papers back to him, her hand shook, her voice barely audible. Ah, I never meant for this to happen. Damien took the papers without another word, turning his back to her as he walked toward the door. As he reached it, he paused, looking back one last time. Goodbye, Lucy, he said, his voice hollow. And with that, he walked out, leaving her on her knees in the middle of the room, alone and broken, surrounded by the remnants of the life they'd once shared. The whispers of friends and family slowly began to fade as they, too, filed out, leaving Lucy with nothing but silence and the haunting echo of what she had lost. Days after Damien walked out, Lucy's life fell apart. She barely slept, haunted by the faces of friends and family from that night and the quiet fury in Damien's eyes. Her once-bustling phone went silent, calls ignored, messages left unread. No one seemed willing to hear her side. Lucy scrolled through her contacts, heart pounding as she landed on Damien's name. She dialed, hoping he'd answer. But each time, the line rang and then clicked to voicemail, the sound of his recorded voice deepening her despair. Desperation drove her to write long letters, pleading, apologizing, anything she could think of to reach him. She poured out every word she could think of, sealing the letters with trembling hands before sending them. But his silence was a constant answer, one that she couldn't escape. Then came the messages from her family. Her mother left a short voicemail, voice shaking. Lucy, we love you, but I, I don't know how to face you after what you did to Damien. Give us some time. It stung deeply, but the real blow came from her father. We can't support this, Lucy. You destroyed something beautiful for, for what? Until you can tell us, don't come to the house. Even her closest friends kept their distance, reluctant to associate with her after the dramatic exposure of her betrayal. She found herself alone, wandering aimlessly in the city they'd shared together, feeling more like a stranger with every passing day. Every time she saw something that reminded her of Damien, a favorite coffee shop, the path they used to jog together, she felt a tightening in her chest. She tried to push the memories away, but they clung to her, refusing to fade. One afternoon, exhausted and anxious, she decided to call Ryan. He picked up with a cold tone she barely recognized. What do you want? He said, no warmth in his voice. Ryan, I, I just needed to talk to someone. Everything's been so hard, she replied, swallowing the lump in her throat. I thought we could help each other through this. He scoffed. Help each other? Are you serious? My career's gone, Lucy. My name's Trash. All thanks to that little reveal Damien pulled. Do you have any idea what my life's become? She hesitated, stung by his bitterness. I didn't mean for this to happen, Ryan. I didn't know Damien would. Didn't know? You knew the risk, Lucy. You just thought you wouldn't get caught. Now we both pay the price. His voice hardened, anger clear. Lucy fell silent, unable to answer. She'd once seen Ryan as an escape from the predictability of marriage, a thrill. Now he felt like a stranger, someone she'd barely recognize. The next time they met, it was less of a reunion and more of an attempt to hold on to some semblance of familiarity. They sat across from each other in a quiet bar, the tension thick between them. Ryan glanced around, looking uncomfortable. You know, people look at me differently now, he muttered, glancing down at his drink. I lost my job and nobody wants to hire me. Everyone knows about that night. I know, Lucy replied, her voice soft. 
I've been trying to reach out to people to explain, but no one wants to listen. Ryan shook his head, irritation flashing across his face. Explain? Explain what? That we were careless? That you thought it was worth losing everything? Her shoulders tensed. I thought, I thought you felt the same way. That we both wanted this. He snorted, a bitter smile creeping onto his face. Want it? Sure. I wanted it when we thought it was fun and harmless. But now, he looked at her, his gaze cold. Now I'd give anything to go back and erase it all. The weight of his words hit her. The reality that their affair had been nothing more than a fleeting thrill. She looked down, her fingers twisting the napkin in her hands. So that's it? We're just throwing it all away? He sighed, leaning back, his eyes avoiding hers. What's left to throw away, Lucy? We destroyed everything for a few months of whatever this was. They sat in silence, the painful realization settling between them. The allure of their secret meetings, the excitement, it was gone, replaced by resentment and blame. As the weeks wore on, the bitterness between them deepened. One evening, Ryan showed up at her apartment, clearly intoxicated, his words slurring. So this is it. Huh. He slurred, looking around her disheveled apartment. This is what we get after it all blows up in our faces. Ryan, you need to leave, she said, backing away from him. He ignored her, stepping closer, his gaze angry and accusatory. Do you know what you cost me, Lucy? You knew Damien. You should have known he'd find out. Lucy swallowed, feeling the shame and anger mixing inside her. I didn't plan this, Ryan. I didn't think he'd do all of this. Ryan laughed, the sound bitter. Well, he did, and now we're both paying for it. So congratulations, Lucy. You got what you wanted. She stood in silence, watching as he stumbled out, leaving her alone in the mess they'd created. His visits became sporadic but intense each encounter filled with blame and anger until she could barely stand to be in the same room as him. Meanwhile, her attempts to contact Damien continued, though each one ended in the same cold silence. She'd send message after message, calling late into the night, hoping he might answer just once, but he never did. Instead, she was left with the emptiness of her choices, her regret a constant companion. Months later, she received a call from her mother, hesitant and distant. Well, we're having a family dinner, Lucy. I think it's best if you don't come. The words hit her like a punch, though she managed to quiet. I understand. Hanging up, she realized the full extent of her choices, the finality of the damage she'd done. She had no one left to turn to, no one willing to forgive her. Ryan, too, drifted away, moving to a different city to escape the fallout. He stopped returning her calls, his voice and her memories tinged with anger and resentment. She was left alone, completely isolated, haunted by her choices. And as she sat in the empty apartment they'd once filled with secrets, Lucy knew there was no going back. The life she'd thrown away was gone, and she was left only with the ruins of her choices and the quiet, unyielding silence that would follow her forever. Months after Lucy's betrayal and the explosive end to their marriage, Damien found himself embracing a new chapter of life. The initial days had been hard, sleepless nights, echoes of memories he'd thought were genuine, and the ache of betrayal gnawing at him. But he had made a choice. He wasn't going to let her actions define him or his happiness. Gradually, he started rediscovering himself, shedding the pain and anger, and replacing it with a newfound drive to rebuild his life. On weekends, he picked up hiking, something he'd always wanted to try, but had never had the time for. The trails became his sanctuary, each climb and each view at the top feeling like a small victory. He rekindled friendships, too, old friends he hadn't seen in years who welcomed him back with open arms. They had seen him through the hard days, and now, they watched in admiration as he slowly became a stronger, more grounded man. One evening, his friend David invited him to a gathering at a cozy, dimly lit wine bar downtown. It's just a few of us, David said, giving him a knowing grin. I thought it'd be good for you to get out, meet some new people. Damien hesitated, but eventually agreed, feeling more ready than he had in a long time. As he entered, David waved him over to a table where a few others were chatting and laughing. And that's when he noticed her. 
Ashley sat across the table, laughing at something another friend had said, her laughter warm and unrestrained. She had a natural kindness in her eyes, a quiet strength in the way she carried herself, and as she met his gaze, her smile was open and genuine. David noticed the look on Damien's face and leaned over, whispering, Her name's Ashley. Works in community health, really kind-hearted, and single. Just so you know, Damien chuckled, shaking his head. It's not like that, David. I'm just not looking for anything serious right now. David gave him a friendly nudge. No pressure, man. Just be yourself. As the evening went on, their small group naturally split into pairs and smaller conversations. At one point, Damien found himself alone with Ashley, each of them nursing their drinks as they shared stories about their lives. She talked about her work, how she helped families struggling with medical care access, and the challenges of balancing her job with her own personal life. That sounds intense, Damien said, genuinely intrigued. How do you manage to keep yourself grounded with all that pressure? Ashley shrugged, a soft smile crossing her face. I try to take care of myself, I guess. Lots of reading, cooking, the simple things. It helps. And I've learned that being honest with yourself and others makes a huge difference. Damien felt a pang at her words, memories of the betrayal he had endured flickering briefly in his mind. Honesty, he repeated quietly, nodding. It's amazing how rare that can be, huh? Ashley's expression softened, sensing the meaning behind his words. Yeah, it really is. But when you do find it, it's worth holding on to. They spent the rest of the evening sharing more about themselves, their interests, their pasts, and even a few vulnerabilities. Damien was struck by how easy it felt to talk to her, like they'd known each other much longer. She didn't pry about his past, and he appreciated that. Instead, she listened and offered quiet understanding. As the evening drew to a close, Damien hesitated before saying goodbye, realizing he wasn't ready for the night to end. Ashley, he began, catching her just as she was slipping on her coat. Would you like to grab coffee sometime? No pressure, just a chance to keep talking. Ashley's face lit up with a smile, her eyes sparkling. I like that, Damien. I really like that. Over the next few weeks, they met regularly. They explored small coffee shops, tried new restaurants, and even hiked a few trails together, laughing as they navigated steep paths and slippery rocks. Ashley's openness was a bomb to his healing heart. She never judged him for the pain he had carried, nor did she ask for explanations he wasn't ready to give. She just listened, shared her own stories, and let him be himself. One evening, as they were watching the sunset at a lookout point, Damien turned to her, feeling a wave of gratitude. Ashley, I don't know how to say this, but you've reminded me of things I thought I'd lost forever. She smiled gently meeting his gaze. I'm glad, Damien. You deserve happiness, just like anyone else. Damien took a deep breath, feeling the heaviness of the past lift a little more. There were days I thought I'd never feel this, he said, gesturing to the two of them, the setting sun casting a warm glow around them. I thought I'd lost the ability to trust, but you make it feel so natural. Ashley took his hand, giving it a reassuring squeeze. We're all healing from something, Damien. I guess we just need to find the people who make that healing feel a little easier. In the weeks that followed, their connection grew stronger. It was unlike anything he had felt before, a steady, quiet bond built on mutual respect and understanding. He felt like he could be himself without fear, without the looming shadow of betrayal. Gradually, Damien realized he was ready to let go of the anger he'd held on to since Lucy's affair. It didn't define him anymore. His time with Ashley showed him that there was still good in the world, still people worth trusting. And, most importantly, he learned that he was capable of happiness on his own terms, without carrying the weight of someone else's actions. One night, as they sat by a small fire pit he'd set up in his backyard, Damien turned to Ashley, a look of quiet resolve in his eyes. Ashley, I know it's been months, but there's something I need to say. I haven't been completely open with you. My marriage ended badly, and for a long time, I blamed myself. I felt like maybe I wasn't enough. Ashley listened, nodding as she placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. But being with you has taught me that I am enough. He continued, his voice steady. 
that I deserve someone who respects me, who values honesty as much as I do. Ashley's eyes filled with warmth, and she took his hand. You do deserve that, Damien. And I'm grateful to be here, to be part of your journey. Their bond deepened that night. And as Damien looked into Ashley's eyes, he realized he was no longer haunted by his past. Instead, he felt hopeful, open to the future they could build together. In Ashley, he found not only a companion, but a partner who valued him. And with her by his side, he finally knew what it felt like to be truly happy. It was late one evening when Damien received the unexpected knock on his door. Ashley was away for the weekend, and he had been enjoying a quiet night with a book. He opened the door, and there stood Lucy, disheveled, eyes red-rimmed and pleading. Damien's initial reaction was one of shock, quickly tempered by a wave of anger and, oddly, pity. Lucy, he asked, his voice steady but guarded. What are you doing here? She stepped forward, hands trembling as she clutched her coat close. Damien, please, I need to talk to you. I know I have no right to ask for your time, but please. Her voice was barely a whisper, and her eyes were desperate, darting around as though she could barely bring herself to look at him. Damien took a deep breath, holding the door open just wide enough for her to enter. Five minutes, Lucy. That's all. He gestured toward the living room, and she nodded, walking inside. He watched her as she moved, noticing how worn she looked, her once proud posture hunched, her eyes dimmed with regret. Once seated, Lucy clasped her hands tightly, her gaze fixed on the floor. I know I don't deserve to be here. After everything I did, her voice broke, and she took a shuddering breath before continuing. I was a fool, Damien. I threw away everything for something meaningless, and I lost you. I've lost everything. Damien crossed his arms, leaning against the doorframe. So, what is it you want from me, Lucy? Closure? Forgiveness? Because the time for apologies has passed. His tone was firm, but he kept his voice level, refusing to let anger cloud his judgment. Lucy's eyes filled with tears, and she shook her head slowly. Damien, please. I know I messed up. I was selfish and reckless. But being without you, realizing what I threw away, it's been unbearable. I came here because... She hesitated, her voice shaking. I need you, Damien. I need you to give us one more chance. I swear I'll spend every day trying to make it right. Damien's jaw tightened, and he felt a mix of sadness and bitterness rise in him. A chance? Lucy, the day you chose to betray me was the day our story ended. He let out a deep sigh, his eyes hardening. You made a choice that day, one that shattered any trust one had in you. And I've finally found peace, something I thought I'd never have again. His voice softened, but his gaze remained unyielding. I won't let you take that away from me. Lucy looked up, her expression pleading. But people can change, Damien. I've changed. I'm not the same person I was. I know the value of what I lost. I understand what I did to you. Damien shook his head, feeling a strange clarity wash over him. I don't doubt you regret it, Lucy. But this isn't about your regret. It's about the fact that I deserve better than to be someone's second choice. He paused, his voice steady. I've moved on. I'm building something real with someone who values honesty, and I'm not about to jeopardize that for the sake of trying to fix what you broke. Lucy's face crumpled, and for a moment, Damien almost felt a pang of sympathy. She looked as if she had been stripped of everything, her expression hollow and vulnerable. Damien, please. I'm begging you. I've never been this lost before. I was foolish, but I'm willing to do anything to make it right. She reached out, her hand trembling, as though trying to bridge the chasm between them. But Damien stepped back, crossing his arms again. I can't, Lucy. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. I've moved on, and I'm with someone who makes me feel like I'm worth something. His tone softened slightly as he looked down at her, a hint of finality in his voice. I hope you find peace, Lucy, but it won't be with me. Lucy's tears spilled over, and she bit her lip, stifling a sob. I understand, she whispered, her voice breaking. I just, I wish I could go back and change it all. I wish I could be the person you deserve. Damien took a steady breath, his resolve unshaken. Wishing isn't enough, Lucy. The past is done, 
and I've worked too hard to rebuild my life to turn back now. I found happiness without you, and that's where I intend to stay. For a moment, they both stood in silence. Lucy finally nodded, accepting the painful truth. She looked around the room, as though seeing the life he had built in her absence, a life she was no longer part of. Her gaze lingered on a small photograph on the mantel, a picture of Damien and Ashley laughing together on a hiking trip, carefree and content. She's lucky, Lucy murmured, a ghost of a smile on her tear-streaked face. I hope you treat her better than I treated you. Damien's expression softened slightly, and he gave a small nod. I will, and I hope you find the peace you're looking for. But it's time for you to go, Lucy. Lucy swallowed hard, standing slowly, her shoulders hunched as if bearing the weight of her choices. She paused at the door, casting one last, lingering look at him. Goodbye, Damien. I truly am sorry, she whispered, and with a quiet, resigned sigh, she stepped out of his life for good. Damien closed the door behind her, feeling a strange mix of relief and finality. He took a deep breath, his mind racing with the events of the evening. But as he walked back into his living room and saw the picture of him and Ashley, he felt a sense of calm settle over him. The last tie to his painful past had finally been cut, leaving him free to build a future without shadows or regrets. A text notification broke his thoughts. It was Ashley. Hope your night's going well. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, it read. Damien smiled, typing back. Can't wait either. Drive safe and see you soon. As he put his phone down, Damien realized that, for the first time, he felt nothing but gratitude for the journey he'd taken, painful as it had been. With Ashley, he was building something real, something rooted in honesty and respect. And with every passing day, he was learning to love and trust again on his own terms, without the ghosts of the past haunting his every step. Damien walked down the quiet park path with Ashley by his side, her hand warm in his, fingers intertwined. It was early evening, and the setting sun cast a golden glow over the trees, creating an almost magical atmosphere. He felt a deep sense of calm and contentment, something he hadn't experienced in a long time. As they strolled, Ashley glanced up at him, catching his thoughtful expression. You seem at peace today, she said, a smile tugging at her lips. Damien chuckled softly. I am, he replied, squeezing her hand. It feels strange, actually peaceful, but in a way that makes me feel free. Ashley nodded, understanding. You've come a long way, Damien. Not everyone can turn their life around after going through what you did. She paused, her eyes sincere. I'm proud of you. They reached a bench by the lake and Damien motioned for them to sit. The calm water reflected the colors of the sky, a perfect mirror to his newfound serenity. Sitting beside him, Ashley rested her head on his shoulder, and he wrapped an arm around her, feeling a sense of quiet joy. You know, he began, staring out over the lake. For a long time, I thought I'd never trust again, that I'd always be looking over my shoulder, wondering if I was about to be hurt again. Ashley looked up at him, a gentle look in her eyes. And now, Damien took a deep breath. Now I know that it's possible to heal. That even if you go through something painful, there's a way to rebuild. And sometimes, when you do, you end up stronger than before. He glanced down at her, his voice softening. And meeting you made me realize I don't have to go through life guarded anymore. Ashley smiled, reaching up to touch his face gently. I'm glad you feel that way. Because you deserve every bit of happiness, Damien. You deserve to feel loved and appreciated, without hesitation. They sat in comfortable silence for a few minutes. The gentle breeze rustling the leaves. The sounds of distant laughter and chatter from others enjoying the park. Damien's mind drifted back to the days after he had cut Lucy from his life. How the emptiness had been overwhelming. How he had questioned his worth, his judgment, and even his purpose. But in that space, he had found room to rebuild, to rediscover parts of himself he'd forgotten. I'm not sure I would have gotten here without everything that happened, he admitted, almost to himself. It's strange to think about, but I feel like I found strength through the whole experience. Ashley nodded, a look of understanding on her face. Sometimes the hardest parts of life teach us the most. And you had the courage to face it all, to move forward. 
She turned to him, her expression soft but serious. So what now, Mr. New Beginning? What's next? Damien chuckled, thinking it over. Well, there's a lot I want to do. I want to travel, maybe get back into some of the hobbies I used to love. And of course, he added, looking in her eyes, I want to keep seeing where things go with you. Ashley's eyes sparkled, and she laughed. Then we'd better start planning some adventures, don't you think? They both laughed, a joyful sound that echoed across the lake, the weight of the past fully left behind. As they continued to talk about plans for the future, from hiking trips to visiting new cities, Damien realized how much he was looking forward to life again. Not as a distraction from the pain he'd endured, but because he genuinely felt excited about the possibilities. A light drizzle began, just as they were about to get up, and they both paused, glancing up at the sky. Looks like we're going to get soaked, Damien joked, pulling Ashley up from the bench. She laughed, grabbing his hand. Well, we could run for cover or just enjoy the rain. Without waiting for his answer, she began to spin in the rain, pulling him along with her. He laughed, letting himself get swept up in her energy, feeling like a kid again. After a moment, they both stopped, catching their breath, drenched but grinning. I haven't done that since I was a kid, Damien admitted, wiping the water from his face. Ashley grinned. Sometimes it's good to be a little reckless. Reminds us of who we were before everything got complicated. She looked at him, a mischievous glint in her eye. Besides, isn't life about finding joy in the little things? Damien nodded, feeling as though a final piece of the puzzle had clicked into place. Yeah, I think it is. He wrapped his arms around her, pulling her close, both of them soaking wet but too happy to care. As they walked back to his car, Damien's phone buzzed with a message. Curious, he checked it. It was from an old friend who hadn't been in touch since the fallout with Lucy. The message was short and simple. Hey, Damien, just wanted to check in. Heard you're doing well. Let's catch up sometime. Damien smiled, realizing how far he'd come, and that perhaps he was ready to let some people back into his life. Not everyone from the past was a painful memory. Some had simply been caught in the crossfire. He sent a quick response, feeling a sense of closure and renewal. They climbed into the car, and as Damien started the engine, Ashley leaned over, giving him a quick peck on the cheek. To new beginnings, she said, her voice full of warmth. Damien glanced over, feeling his heart swell. To new beginnings, he echoed, a grin spreading across his face. He knew the road ahead wouldn't be without its bumps, but he was ready for it, ready for all the highs and lows that life would throw at him. He had finally reclaimed his happiness, his peace, and his sense of self. As they drove off, Damien took one last look in the rearview mirror. But instead of seeing the past, he saw only the wide open road ahead, full of possibility, ready for him to explore.